Good morning. Take our hymnals and turn to 727. Faith is the victory and sing first and fourth verses, please. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foes in bills be blown, let all your strength be heard. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Raymond shall be healed before the angels we shall know his name confessed in him then onward from the hills of life our hearts with love of flame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus conquering name Under his wings you will find refuge. 620, first and third verses, please. Welcome back to another little sermonette that we have here at Dalton Hill. We just wanted to remind everyone the council met this week and just for the health risks that we have over the age of our congregation, the council has uh, thought it was best that we not meet for a few more weeks. Uh, it's not that we, all of them were willing to come and, uh, and uh, fellowship and be even here this Sunday, but we just think it's best not knowing the numbers and see what happens to uh, just wait. We can't have the spacing that's desired, and uh, 
and things like that that we'll just wait a couple more weeks and don't want to put anyone at risk. Uh, just ask also that you guys be praying for the council and everyone to leadership to know what is best and that uh, there's a questionnaire that's going out and you guys uh, looking at it and just getting the feedback and uh, what that would be so we can all uh, go forward as a unit, as a body. If you remember just uh, what we've looked covered so far on these little sermonettes, what our eyes are focused on, it uh, should not be on the circumstances but on Christ. Our purpose is still the same and therefore we need to prioritize and purify ourselves to stay true to our focus. If you remember we looked at what PPE are we wearing and are we wearing it properly and we certainly are in a spiritual battle and that we'll make sure that we have it on and using it effectively. If you remember we also on Easter Sunday saw the similarities between the first Easter and the Easter of this year when it was certainly during a dark time and uh, Joseph Arimathea still stood and did what was right. And you had others like the two on the road to Emmaus that needed some help with Scripture to understand where they were at. And there's plenty of, of those that today as well that need help with Scripture to understand. And uh, some like Thomas needed a, just a personal encounter with Christ. They will not take the word of others. And then you had the Simon of Cyrene, obviously, that had the life-changing event comes to Passover and leads the changed man meeting, uh, meeting the uh, his Savior. If you remember, we also looked uh, two weeks ago at the uh, first responders and how can we help them and can help them through prayer and understanding and appreciation. And we also looked at what some of the biblical first responders did, like uh, Moses and staying the course and Joseph willing to give his life a service for his family and his nation. Nehemiah willing to uh, change directions and go from a cupbearer to being a bricklayer. And we think of Esther who was raised up for a time like this to become queen to help save her nation. Uh, last week we saw some of the challenges of resuming services and raised some questions just about the physical part that we have of the building, the limitations and the personal is how we respond uh, willing to come and the spacing and things and the corporate challenges but we looked at some of the uh, ways in which the biblical challenges were faced in scripture and we saw with Nehemiah and how he started praying in Nehemiah 1 and 2 for four months for guidance that God would give him and we're wanting to do the same we saw also that he inspected the wall just to see what task exactly that he was needing to do and we want to do the same inspect what's best for Dalton Hill and not for other churches but just for Dalton Hill and how we need to direct our path we want to using the word of God as our guide in Psalms 119 we have that we also just want to have conviction there's some that think we should meet others don't and that yet we're all still brothers and sisters in Christ and we may not agree on when we should or how we should but that we want to allow others to have difference of opinion, but still love them in Christ. And then, then like with Joshua and Joshua 1, three different times he's told to have courage. And we need to have courage in the midst of all this and recognize that changes certainly may be uh, coming upon us, whether we like it or not. And that takes us to uh, today as we thought we were going to start a new series, but since we're not... Uh, meeting yet i'm holding off till we actually meet together again to start the series of kind of what the vision team and i would talked about so today i was just like think a little bit about new beginnings i think we're in a time of new beginnings don't know exactly uh what it's going to look like in the future but we've all had uh, many new beginnings obviously that of birth alone is a new beginning for coming into this world I'm thinking of when you go off to grade school leaving your parents for the going to school and then you get into middle school instead of having one teacher multiple teachers and get into high school and all the elective classes you get and trying to decide what you're gifted at you're thinking about going off to college or for vocation and leaving home and getting into a career and often many of us have had changed several times we've had new beginnings with new careers you have a marriage and children and new beginnings and First time home buyer and so many new beginnings, retirement, uh, new things you're facing with retirement. 
So new beginnings, and I was thinking that's where we're at really as a church right now. If some new beginnings facing different things, we're not sure exactly how to face them. So it made me think a little bit about the nation of Israel and just some of the things that they were facing when they left that of Egypt. And I thought we'd do it for one week, but it's probably going to take me a couple of weeks just since we're just doing about 10 or 15 minutes each week. But if you think about it in the, the book of Exodus, if you think about it, you have the new beginnings. First one I'm thinking of that, if it's words, I'll just give you about six words, but uh, one of it is that of chaos. And you stop and you think about it. In 9-11, we had a lot of chaos, obviously, and as a result, we, our air travel is different than it was beforehand with all the uh, checkpoints and security checks and everything we go through, uh, the changes we have with our passports today. You have all those changes. And you're thinking about it in the book of Exodus, if you stop and think about it, in chapter 1 through chapter 4, if you recall, that's when Moses was basically the history of him from infant all the way up in his first uh, 80 years of his life and the preparations God had for him. And in chapter 5 to chapter 7 of Exodus, you have his couple of encounters with Pharaoh when he's telling him to let his people go. And starting in chapter 7, then through chapter 12, we have the ten plagues that God brings upon uh, Egypt in order to persuade Pharaoh from letting them go. And when you get into chapter uh, 12, uh, we know it quite well when you have the, <clears throat> when the, the blood that was put on the doorpost to where we get to later the Passover basis from. And the Egyptians obviously didn't put it on the doorposts. In verse 29, it states of Exodus 12, it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh rose in the middle of the night, he and his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. There is no home where there was not someone dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise, get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel, and go and worship the Lord as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said, Go and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, with their kneading bowls bound up with the cloths on their shoulders. The sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, for they had requested from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have their request. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. And you go down in verse 37, it'll tell you how many people left. It looks like, based on the numbers, that was close to 2 million people. And it's interesting when you look that they had no delay, but in verse 40 not of chapter 12 of Exodus, it says, Now the time for the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years, and it came about at the end of the 430 years to the very day that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Now thus it would be, a, obviously it would be a chaotic time. You know, somebody in the middle of the night ordering everybody to leave. Two million people leaving, but notice it wasn't chaotic to God. It said it was to the very day. And I think it's we look at it and stop and just applying it to our life. Uh, it was chaotic with all that's going on in our nation with the, the virus and everything. But it didn't catch, it wasn't chaotic to God. And I think the question we can ask are, are we listening and doing all that God is telling us to do just like the Israelites were told to put the blood on us. They were told to leave. They were told to ask for the different things that, uh, from the Egyptians, obviously from captivity, to pay for what they have done. But again, it's not. it may be a time of chaos, but are we listening to God and are we following what He tells us to do? When you get to uh, chapter 13 of Exodus, and after you have the Passover, and it then talks about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in verse 8, it says, And as you shall tell your sons on that day, saying, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. And it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand and on your reminder on your forehead 
that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth, for with a powerful hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Therefore you shall keep this ordinance as it is appointed time from year to year. So not only I think the new beginnings of chaos, but also that of classroom. How are we going to remember this time and how God has helped us through it? And how are we going to teach our kids, our grandkids, and everyone else? The Lord is certainly uh, guiding us along the way. And I'm thinking even of uh, if our own church and uh, voting not to go for the building and the different things, the buying or changing locations. In the middle of all this, it would have been very difficult. And the Lord has uh, guided us to be where we are right now in an easier time, but He'll guide us in the future as well. But are we going to use this time and how are we going to remember it to help people who come after us at church to remember the times of these difficulties we face, the chaos, but the classroom, how we can teach others to uh, be the guiding influence to them in the future. Besides only the chaos and the classroom, when you get to chapter 13 a little later, I think is that word comes to my mind is that of course. What course do we take? And you notice in verse 17, it says, Now it came about when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war, and they return to Egypt. And so it's interesting. We each have a different course uh, how Dalton Hill is wanting us to go, God wants us to go, maybe a little different than one of the other churches. But God didn't lead the the Israelites the shortest course. He took them by the southern course. And you'll notice when you go down that he, <clears throat> a little further in the text, it says that, uh, verse 21, the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day, and he led them the way in a pillar of fire by night, giving them light, that they might travel by day or by night. We have the same thing. We have a course that God is leading us. That word's a lamp unto my, our feet and a light unto our path. And the, uh, just like in the days of, uh, of Moses with the children of Israel, we have a course to take too. And how does what is God directing us? And uh, so it may be chaotic, but we have a classroom we can learn from in the Word of God and what He's teaching us. And He's given us a course with which to follow. And in 2 Corinthians 4, we're told to be ambassadors for Christ. And that hasn't changed whether we are with one or two people or over the phone or whatever it might be. Or in chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, when we're told to reconcile people to the Lord, a lot of people are really questioning a lot of different things. And they can be reconciled today but they realize so many things that they relied on have been taken from them. So think about these new beginnings and stuff that we have with Egypt. With Israel, rather, excuse me, a chaotic time, but it's just as God had planned. And it's chaotic with us, but God is not caught off guard. And through this time of learning in a classroom setting, we can really learn from what He's wanting us to do, what we're relying on, not our 401k or anything else, but we're relying on Him and following Him with what He wants us to do. And He'll give us a course with which to follow. And as we follow that course, he then will direct us different directions. It may take them not the northerly course like he told Israel, but do the southerly course, and he'll show Dalton Hill what we need to do. You get to chapter 14. The fourth one I have is that of challenges. It's going to be challenges along the way. And I think of two million people going, and notice they then come up to a river, probably flooded at this time. And if you get in chapter 14, that's when the Pharaoh, you remember, uh, makes the statement that uh, why do we let the the uh, slaves go? Why do we let Israel go? So he pursues them to uh, catch up with them and bring them back. And you get to verse 7 of chapter 14. You'll notice it says he took 600 select chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers all over all of them. And he comes then to, goes to, to chase them down. The Israel had no... Uh, Military had no weapons. And here you have the strongest military coming after them. You have water on one side. In flood stage, you have the Egyptians coming at them from the other side. And that would be quite a challenge. And obviously, Israel is fearful. But notice what Moses tells them to, 
God. In verse 13, he tells them, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord. And so, are we looking at our circumstances? Or are we looking at the... We have God on our side and the challenges that we have. And we know in verse 14, it said, The Lord will fight for you. It's interesting in verse 15, what he tells them to do. He tells them to go forward. God tells them to go forward. Go forward into the water. And if you notice, the water obviously parted with the strong wind and the cloud kept Egypt from coming on them. And the wind parted the water and then dried it. And obviously they went across <coughs> on dry land. And when the Egyptians came after them, obviously they got open the allowed the water to come back. And it's interesting when you get to 25, what the Egyptians said, it said, let us flee in verse 25 from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. They recognized what the uh, who was fighting for Israel. And we have the same God who is fighting for us as well. So we look at the challenges. I think it's interesting, is it an opportunity or is it an obstacle? And when the Israelites looked at it, Humanly speaking, it was an obstacle, the water and the Egyptians. But when they looked to God, it was an opportunity to go on dry land and go towards the promised land. The same thing is true for you and I. So when you think about it, is this an obstacle that we're facing or is it an opportunity? And right now we have people that are doing different things. We're having different ways of reaching out, learning new technology of how to minister, get the Word of God out from Dalton Hill to the people, audio and visual and different things. So we have the same thing. Things are constantly changing and we have to be willing to. But So not only um, the new beginnings, is it maybe a time of chaos, time of a classroom learning setting we can learn things, time of a course with what God wants us to take, facing the challenges that are way out in front of us. And these challenges God knows all along when we're and He was bringing them our way or allows us to come our way. But we need to rely on Him. The fifth one I think about in the midst of this is that of choices. When you get into the chapter 15, and starting in the, <clears throat> verse 23, if you think about it, you had the, uh, the, choice, you know, the ones about water. Where they had the difference with water and get, they're upset because there's a lack of water. And in verse 25, it said God did it to test them. And there'll be, you know, choices for you and I. God's going to allow things and obstacles to come our way and are to test us. You get in chapter 16 and verse 4 when they're talking about hunger. And again, it said He tested them to see whether they would walk in His instruction. You get in chapter 17, you have another one when they test God again because of water. So we're going to constantly be facing choices and challenges that we face. And are we going to walk by sight or are we going to walk by faith? And they had the choice each time. God was testing them. And finally on the 10th one, as we know, they failed each time and God had said enough. You and I are facing challenges too and choices that we're making. And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We came to Christ by faith, and now we also have to walk by faith. Just like the, the children of Israel, they left Egypt, put the, the blood on the, on the doorposts, we walked, started with faith, but as they will, took their journey, they likewise had to walk by faith there as well. And I think with ours too, we, we look at it in 401ks, and so many of us have lost so much and don't have enough time in our life to make it back up. But are we looking by faith to Christ to follow Him and the things we should do and retire and or whatever it might be or working for Him or are we simply looking at things in our own human eyes? So thinking about it, children of Israel had those choices and you and I do as well. If you remember in Exodus 17, the uh, Israel was desiring to cross the land of the Malachites and they said no and the Malachites went to go fight them in battle and as if you remember the story well then when Moses hands were lifted up in intercession when his hands were up the Israelites were winning and when his arms got heavy and came down the Malachites were winning so if you remember in verse 
uh, 13 that you have of chapter uh, 17, or, excuse me, verse 12, it says that uh, Aaron held up one arm and Ur held up the other arm, and they both held him up, so between the three they're able to keep his arms up, and Israel oh, uh, overwhelmed them in verse 13 and won the battle. But if it wasn't for Ur and Aaron helping uh, Moses, the battle would have turned differently. And the same is true in Galatians 2, that you and I are told to bear one another's burdens. And there's times when people are going through things that, uh, difficult times even during this uh, pandemic we have, that we need others to help bear them up, bear their burdens. But the same token, when you get to the uh, chapter 18, Moses was trying to do everything on his own. And the people were coming to him from sunrise to sunset, and he was trying to judge every single case. And it was more than he could do. And Jethro, his father-in-law, told him that this is not good for you or for the people, and you need to divide responsibilities for the people can help you. And the same thing is true for us. We need companions and helpers along the way. We can be helpers to others or allow others to help us. So we think about the new beginnings. We'll look at more of it next week. Just that we're trying to do a little sermonettes each time. But remember, it's a time of chaos that uh, may be taken much like when the middle of the night when Israel left with two million people. But it was not chaos to God. It was according to the very day. And this pandemic didn't catch God off. So are we listening to Him and doing what He tells us to do? As you look back when the months and years to come, uh, what have we learned from it? Whether it be like the Passover that they Israel has celebrated since, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and how then that they can use that to teach the children and their grandchildren. How are we going to use this, and how God has helped us through it as a church, as, as individuals, and how we can use that to uh, teach uh, our kids and grandkids on how to face difficulties. The course that we need to take, follow the course quickest way across would have been going through the Philistines, land of the Philistines, but God said they weren't ready for that yet, that battle, so he took them on the southern route. And what course does God want you and I individually to take, but what course does God want you and I as, uh, as Dalton Hill Baptist Church to take, and that's the course that we need to take and walk with it. Also, if you remember the challenges, we had, uh, we're all facing challenges, but Israel was facing Pharaoh behind him and the water in front, and we likewise have challenges in front of us as the church. And do we see them as obstacles or opportunities? And right now we're coming up with different ways to serve and spreading out with new technology and different people stepping forward. And let's look at it and see it as opportunities for the future growth of the Dalton Hill and the spread of the Word of God throughout our Owasso and throughout the world. We can also, like I said, had choices. Israel had choices with the manna and with the water, and they were grumbling and complaining. And are we grumbling or complaining, or are we walking by faith and saying, how is God going to see it, show us through on this one? And then obviously the last one we looked at was that of companionship. And we need to rely on each other, help each other, but also allow others to help us. So think about our new beginnings here that we're trying to go through. We don't know what all the differences are going to be or for how long but that we will truly turn to Him and walk arm in arm together as we face this together. Hope you all have a great week. Thank you. This last song is talking about living for others in this uncertain time with the virus epidemic going on. Help us to think of others, what we might do to protect ourselves as well as them. And we-
when my work on earth is done and my new work in heaven's begun may i forget the crown i've won while thinking still of others others lord yes others let this my